Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and we have a lot to talk about today. We have uh, a new segment I'm going to introduce for you guys. Uh, we got a new stop motion video of the week. We got City Council. They're talking about ADA accessible parking lots, so we'll talk a little bit more about that during City Council segment. Uh, I have events, and also I have new programming here on MCAT that you guys can check out. But first, let's throw it to a little bit of weather. So. Currently, it's 30 degrees outside. It's perfect, it's warm, and it's a great day to kick off your winter solstice. Yes, today is the winter solstice. If you guys are planning anything special for the winter solstice, and I have a couple events for you guys in case you don't, um, there's a lot happening. There's a slight chance of uh, flurry, so just watch out for a little bit of wind. But of course, your high is going to be uh, 33 degrees. Your low is going to be 2 degrees. Uh, but by Thursday, you can expect uh, your high going back down to 19. Um, Friday, you can have a 30% chance of snow up and through the weekend. But for any of you you out there who's excited to do any um, snowboarding or skiing or snowing or anything like that, you guys can look forward to that coming up this weekend as well. I have your On the Snow report, which I got from onthesnow.com. Uh, Whitefish, they got uh, 22 inches of fresh powder in the last 72 hours. Of course, 7 inches in the last seven, um, 24 hours. Uh, Big Sky Resort has a fresh um, inch of powder. Uh, Blacktail Mountain Ski Area has six inches of snow. Um, snow Bowl, nothing um, the last 24 and 72 hours, but that's um, bound to change with this new snow that's going to be coming in through the weekend. Um, Trenton Pass Ski Resort, you have uh, nothing, but then again, you can you never know. Uh, Bridger Bowl, there's nothing, but it says it's green to go, so there's 30, uh, 30 inches on the base and then on 31 inches on the mountain as well. Great divide. Uh, you still have a good amount of snow, but you need to take some caution when you go up there. Lost Trail, Powder Mountain. It is hasn't gotten any really fresh powder in the last 24 hours, but um, you just you may have to call and check and go ahead. Um, Discovery Ski Area had two inches in the last 72 hours. Um, one thing's for sure is that in the last um, a um, couple days, especially yesterday, it rained a lot. So uh, there's just, the roads kind of uh, slick for sure because I almost fell a couple times just on my way here, just thinking that the uh, sidewalks were perfectly clear. So just take a little caution. Um, it rained. It's it's not quite that cold outside because we already had our little cold spell. We made it through, and now we're expected to have uh, typical winter conditions. You know, uh, some weather in the teens, but today we're going to have a nice, nice day for weather. Um, let's talk about what's happening in the news today. If you haven't already read in the Missoulian today, there's a front page article in the newspaper about standing against hate. There's been a, a pro-Nazi uh, propaganda um, being passed around um, in Missoula, especially near and uh, close to the Har Shalom synagogues. Um, and her spiritual leader uh, Lori Franklin spoke on standing against hate. Um, Missoulians gathered to support the small Jewish temple. Hundreds of Missoulians packed the temple over 200 people went to the facility, not necessarily people who are Jewish, but people who uh, support the Har Shalom uh, temple as well. Um, let's see. Uh, Missoula uh, Mayor um, John Engen spoke on supporting Har Shalom and many people who came to support this temple with the belief that, that Missoulians can stand against hate. Uh, here is, uh, I mean, this is a basic symbol that if you guys have any. Um, um, support or if you want to show your support you can download this nice little PDF from the Missoulian website um, it's a nice little uh, um, symbol of the their faith as well as um, being a local Montanan as well um, the Jewish um, there's not many uh, people of Jewish ancestry or Jewish faith um, in and around the state of Montana but Missoula's little uh, little small uh, temple right there is a nice little symbol of the faith as well. Um, in Montana news, um, Ryan Zinke's seat isn't quite cold, uh, but uh, Butte Senator um, Amanda Curtis expressed interest in throwing her hat into the ring once Zinke decides to become Secretary of, uh, Secretary of the Interior. Montana has 85 to 100 days, no more, no less, to find a replacement for Zinke's U.S. congressional seat. Um, on the Republican side, uh, District Judge uh, Russell Fegg and Bozeman builder Eugene Graff IV expressed their interest in running to be Montana's Republican Party nomination. Um, from reading this article in the Billings Gazette, it seems to kind of leans, it's mostly they're talking more about Curtis um, being 
doing this. But you never know because Montana has had a Republican representative for about 20 years since Pat Williams lost to Rick Hill in 97. Montana's law prevents Zinke from appointing a successor, so we'll have to have another voting session sometime in spring if he decides to do so or not. Um, in national news, as the timeline for Trump's inauguration comes closer and closer, uh, many uh, cr uh, criticize that the that the man is holding on to his business um, tighter than he should. Um, Newt Gingrich said that he has to understand that his family has to understand that there is a public interest which transcends them, uh, meaning that Trump must take the job he ran for in the idea that he would not be distracted by his own business or um, have the issues of, um, um, the word I'm looking for is um, interests, you know, just like um, conflicting interests from his business as being president. Um, as the tick, as the clock keeps on ticking down, um, Trump must decide to give up his company, um, which he has said he would put into a blind trust uh, over, uh, I guess, pointing any of his kids or family to take over his business as well. Um, and I found this information at npr.org. NPR uh, um, in world news, um, in Berlin, a Tunisian man stole a lorry, which is a big rig truck. I have the kind of like the look and apparently he barreled through a winter market in Berlin, Germany, where he killed uh, 11 people and over 69 people have been reported as injured in the attack. Uh, no evidence points to ISIS at this time, even though they do claim responsibility. Uh, they had a suspect on Tuesday, but they had no evidence to keep this person. Um, and they say that the person is about 24 years old, Tunisian, and has been kind of hopping around and was in uh, Italy in 2012 and got asylum in 2015 in um, Germany and then just recently did this attack and um, many websites of the isolate of ISIS and uh, Al-Qaeda have been um, basically encouraging people encouraging um, people who are with the Muslim faith to take action by stealing cars and just cause them as much mayhem from those cars as possible and this marks a, another dark time in um, the world um, so moving on, uh, let's lighten things up just a little bit. I have a brand new segment. I call it dubbing stuff. So I take uh, some old, old-timey videos. I have no idea what they're talking about, and I add my voice um, in many different contexts. So I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, if you guys hate it, you guys can call me at uh, call MCAT at five four two six two two eight. But without further ado, here is dubbing stuff. Oh, sorry about that. That's weird. Oh. Okay, we're good. Here we go. So you listen here, girls. While I'm gone, you two are in charge of the store. Just mind it. But I gotta go take a poo. Hey, you're coming with me. Oh boy, looks like it's our chance to show her what who's boss. Oh wow, look at this table. What do you think about this table? It is a nice table. What do you think about the table? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was having coffee with my boyfriend. Yeah, he's real. Oh, I'm sure he is. He sounds really nice, by the way. Uh, I don't know. I think we're going to have to break up. He's uh, kind of clingy, you know. <whistles> Man, I wish I knew how to whistle. <laughs> um, hmm. um, uh, nope. No, uh, God. Uh, um, excuse me. Do you know where uh, I should be going? Down the hall, second left. There you go. That's it. Oh, man, that is totally it. What are you it. talking about? I'm talking about... The anticipation's killing me. Tell me. Nah. Tell me. I'm really frustrated. Oh, I, I didn't mean... Oh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. This is my friend Margarita. She has an imaginary boyfriend. You have an imaginary boyfriend, too? <laughs> it's always the good-looking ones. Why is it always the good-looking ones? What's going on over here? This guy with the package came delivering it to you for some reason. Oh, I made the delivery of myself, if you know what I mean. Oh, I'm really bad with metaphors or whatever. I went to number two. What? This is getting old, my child. Please, let's not talk about it anymore. Number two. What does it mean? 
All right, so that was a dubbing stuff. Let's talk about what's new on MCAT. I'm just going to kind of like mull over that, just kind of forget that you just saw that. Um, let's talk about um, what's uh, where you guys can find more information. You can find more information about this and many other videos I show on my Wake Up Morning, Wake Up Missoula Morning Show by logging on to Wake Up Missoula. Dot, um, wixsite.com slash wake up Missoula. You have to write it all twice and more. You could subscribe, subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, you can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can do all those many different flat platforms that I post on my show and many of the short videos that you have you will see during my show as well. Uh, you can go to MCAT.org to find out this program and many other programs by clicking on our channel 189 link right here and it brings you to a nice little page but here is a schedule of what is new on MCAT. So uh, we got Tree of Life 2016. It's put on by the church, uh, one of the churches here in Missoula. Um, it's where they do their own little lighting of the tree. Um, there's the Montana Book Festival, number seven, is on tonight at 6 p.m. We got Tuba Christmas at 7.30. I have a little tease about that a little bit later. And Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. So Santa Claus, um, he uh, gets invaded by the Martians, and they have no concept of gift giving or the giving spirit of Christmas. And he basically goes to Mars, and he shows them, he's like, hey, it's cool to give and it's cool to receive. Um, just be cool to each other, guys. That's that's basically the movie. And there's a terrible, like a uh, giant, um, um, fake polar bear guy in a polar bear costume shoot, uh, suit. It's it's just awful. <laughs> but you guys can totally check that out. It's happening. Santa Claus conquers the Martians at 9 p.m. tonight on MCAT. Um, there's a couple other programs as well. You guys can check that out anytime by logging on MCAT.org. Um, and then there's Capital Jazz Festival happening. Uh, um, tomorrow night as well as ASAF Cafe at 5 p.m. Without further ado, um, I'm going to talk about Tuba Christmas. Tuba Christmas 2016 has been airing on MCAT and I'm sure you guys have seen it once or twice on our channel 189. But here is a little taste of some Tuba Christmas and Tuba Christmas is where they uh, bring in people from the uh, community uh, to gather around. Anybody can play within the tuba um, uh, band basically the whole idea is that you have to have a tuba or a euphonium which is considered like a tenor tuba to them um, to those people and you can um, just play some Christmas music and some fun um, oompa oompa music with a, usually a, a three time a one two three one two three time so without further ado here's a little taste of that and when we come back we will have some city council to talk about one time here how many of you can just play tuba Christmas and that's freaking it There we go. They've got a 15. This is the one gig they do, and they're the ones for the second set. They're the ones going to be putting their horns on and wondering where their lips are at, okay? Here's boom, boom, boom. So that was Tuba Christmas, and you guys can check that out pretty much anytime on MCAT at MCAT.org, or you can wait to watch it on our channel, which will be running pretty much throughout the holiday season. It's a nice little uh, video um, that you all can enjoy. Um, but without further ado, I'm stalling as we get our city council ready to go. Um, it is Homeless Persons Memorial Day. Uh, this week as uh, um, our our very own John um, Engen ushers in this special proclamation in the city of Missoula. As 
the winter poses extreme hardship for unsheltered and inadequately housed low-income men, women, and children in Missoula, and whereas citizens of Missoula will gather on the longest night of the year, December 21st, 2016, to honor and remember homeless individuals who have died in our community and in Byron's, and whereas since 1990, December 21st has been desi designated National Homeless Persons Memorial Day by the National Coalition for Homeless and the National Health Care for the Homeless Council, and is recognized by cities and states nationwide, and whereas in remembering those who have died without a home of their own, the cause of ending homelessness and the need for compassionate response is kept urgent, as is the city and county's collective commitment to preventing such deaths in the future. Now, therefore, I, John Ingram, Mayor of the City of Missoula, Minnesota, Montana, do hereby recognize the 21st day of December 2016 as Homeless Persons Memorial Day. And there will be a ceremony uh, this week uh, at the Missoula County Courthouse. If you'd like to join us, my calendar says 5.30. Um, All right, so that um, that was a special proclamation, and it's uh, it's very interesting because I talked to uh, Michael Moore, uh, not the d documentarian, but he's a local uh, person here in Missoula who's been helping um, um, combat um, homelessness here in Missoula by basically saying is that it's it's cheaper to house um, a homeless person than it is to uh, pay for the medical bear medical bills as a um, causality of their homelessness as well. Um, moving on, um, we're talking a bit, of, a little bit more about uh, the ADA uh, accessibility when it comes to parking and parking lots. So parking is something that's big here in Missoula and having it ADA accessible for Americans with Disabilities Act is just as important as parking here in Missoula. The city of Missoula has uh, been made aware that the cases the maintenance of parking lots ranging from the simple restripping to completely reconstruction that are not ADA compliant or do not meet zoning requirements, in many cases required ADA spaces are removed, um, reconfigured or reduced in a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Parking lots uh, that receive major surface replacement or complete reconstruction are not meeting current zoning requirements. Um, on the public hearings, uh, the public put this up for discussion and this is Doug Harvey and he talks a little bit more about uh, what this all is. Uh, regulations by the city. And uh, it's a result of reports from the ADA community as well as observations from staff that many parking lots in Missoula have undergone, undergone maintenance activities which have resulted in reduction, removal, or non-compliance of required accessible parking spaces in other ADA facilities and lack of compliance with present zoning regulations. The 2010 ADA standards for accessible design sections 208 and 502 parking spaces states that when a business or state or local government restructures parking spaces in a parking lot or a parking structure or other parking facilities, it must provide accessible parking spaces as required by the 2010 ADA standards for accessible design. In addition, businesses or privately owned facilities that provide goods or services to the public have a continuing ADA obligation to remove barriers to, to access in existing parking facilities when it is read, readily achievable to do so. Because restriping is relatively inexpensive, uh, it is readily achievable in most cases. So what we've done is we've gone through and uh, uh, I'll just give you a brief summary. Uh, we've, we've included some uh, definitions uh, defining public accommodation and alterations, which is key to, uh, to ADA requirements. Um, then we've done a bunch of housekeeping changes to 1222. All right, so um, that was uh, Doug Harvey again. He was talking a, bit, a little bit more about ADA accessibility. Um, here's a little uh, side, a little bit of history of like um, how ADD, ADA has worked with uh, local governments in the past. In Berkeley, California, they passed a similar ordinance for the Americans with Disability Act for curb and sidewalk repair and replacement. When the sidewalks were in need of repair, they would replace them with ADA curb and sidewalk improvable um, to match the ADA requirements. Much to ADA officials and their families and patients to improve fast enough, they decided to break the curbs themselves, forcing this idea to make curb and sidewalks ADA accessible. In Missoula, uh, in Missoula's case, this is all about like parking and the lines and all that stuff. The, to improve the parking structure by putting it under maintenance, 
helps uh, this move this process for us to, forward, but I'm not saying that ADA should actually uh, paint over the existing lines in the parking lot so they can force uh, uh, facilities to um, do that as well. Um, Travis Hoffman, he speaks on this update uh, to the munici municipal code. Um, this, is, and this is what he had to say. Ordinance doesn't place any new requirements as far as what's required for accessibility on businesses. Um, like Doug said, if somebody's going to restrike their parking lot and maybe the slope's not right, if all they're altering is the striping, that's all that needs to be brought into compliance. That signage. Um, if they're reconstructing their whole parking lot, then yes, obviously that would have to be brought into compliance too. But with our ADA, the for existing facilities that have what's known as readily achievable barrier removal, which states that um, as you alter um, components of your facility, those components, but if you're not altering a different a component, it doesn't have to be until you do. Um, and so, yeah, I just hope that you'll pass this ordinance. It'll make it a much easier to uh, enforce accessibility uh, requirements on the local level at least. Um, a lot of places who restripe, just re restripe their existing um, uh, stripage that they've had for how, I don't know how many years. And so oftentimes they don't have non accessible parking spaces. Um, and then when they restripe, they still don't have, so they're out of compliance. And then there's also um, that only makes it easier to enforce on a local level. If somebody doesn't go through the permitting process and they just restrike wrong anyways, it gives them 60 days to fix that um, before they're found in violation of the ordinance too. So it's really um, making it easier to enforce but also uh, making it easier on businesses, like Doug said, to know what they're supposed to do without before they just go and do something that's not right. Thank you. All right, so that was uh, Travis Hoffman talking a little bit more from the uh, ADA um, uh, side of it as well. Uh, Doug Harvey uh, talks more about uh, the pain lines for handicap parking and exceptions to the rules. This is what he had to say. The striping and things is going to be really, really fairly easy for us to enforce as far as you know, a case by case exemption thing because. We've been, uh, we have probably a cumulative of 100 years of ADA experience in my department and the people that review these. So we'll be able to, uh, to, to uh, judge through the guidelines that ADA gives whether uh, a parking space can be striped properly. One of the things that they brought out is that it might not be really achievable to make it accessible for wheelchairs, but we may be able to make it accessible for the, the disabled communities such as vision impaired or somebody with a walker or on crutches or something like that. And that's still acceptable if that's the case. That was the case with the Chamber of Commerce because their parking lot is so, so uh, steep that they're not going to be able to, to reasonably achieve the flat space it takes to park a car, but they will be able to uh, stripe in an ADA accessible spot to allow somebody that's in crutches or uh, somebody that's in a walker or that's visually impaired or other disabilities, you know, realizing that a very small percentage of the disabled community are actually in wheelchairs so that we're, we're at least removing as many barriers as we reasonably can. All right, so that was Doug Harvey once again, and uh, many of the parking um, spots that are handicap accessible are for people who are usually visually impaired. It's only a true, I mean, like the full um, um, handicapped parking spot for people who have those wheelchair chair lifts, that, which are usually uh, put on the passenger side of the vehicles, and they have about five to eight feet of a striped zone for uh, loading and unloading of these wheelchairs from these specially designed cars for um, ADA accessibility. Um, th but that pretty much wraps up all the quotes I have for you guys. This motion was moved to a second and final reading that will be scheduled um, in the next meeting in January. There is no uh, city council meetings in the next two Mondays, so we won't have I won't have uh, to talk about it a little more. But I'm not really going to be here next week. So just telling you guys now is that um, I will not be. Uh, doing the Wake Up Missoula next week, but I will be back uh, the week after. I believe that's going to be on January 4th, talking a little bit more about this, and then I'll have my Christmas special 
for uh, for you guys on Friday. Maybe just talk a little about Christmas stuff. Most of the Christmas programming here on AMCAP. Maybe even do a couple fun little Christmas videos for you guys. Um, but right now, let's. Uh, I have a nice little art clip featuring uh, the Missoula Art Museum. Um, Steve Glucker. And that will be featured at the Mizar Museum until I believe it's going to be uh, pretty much done in uh, late December. So you have until the end of December. So which is not this Friday, but uh, next Saturday is when we'll be taking it all down for any new replacement and stuff like that. And also uh, this Friday, I'll, I'll have all the events for you guys. What you guys need to know for your uh, um, first night in Missoula activities. But without further ado, it is time for a little thing we like to call events. Let's talk about some of the highlight events I have for you guys. Uh, easy steps to ebooks can start off your day here uh, in Missoula at the Missoula Public Library. This class an introduction of an, an overview of ebook resources available at the library. The instruction will cover how to use uh, various ebooks, which is uh, another word for electronic books, to uh, across the library's cl um, collection. Our, uh, the attendees are encouraged to bring their own e-readers to class. Registration is required by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665. And you can get get a hold of, and this happens from 1230 to 1.30 in the, oh, sorry, computer classroom. Ugh, moving on. Eastern Euro European Baking at the Dickinson Life Lear Lo Lifelong Learning Center. Impress your family with uh, fresh pastries from European um, this holiday, European, Eastern European, um, this holiday season, learn to make the uh, much sought after uh, Seinfeld chocolate babka, small uh, filled uh, kolaches, larger nut and poppy seed rolls, and more. And you can check out this is a Wednesday and Thursday night thing happening from 6 to 9 p.m., and it's $54 for both. Um, are you thinking money? Colon. Board Game Night, Missoula Public Library, in conjunction with the exhibit Thinking Money, the uh, library hosts an all-age board game night um, featuring money-themed board games, including The Allowance Game, Payday, Millionaire, and more. I'm pretty sure uh, Monopoly is one of them as well. Um, 6 to 8 p.m. in the large meeting room. Um, and here is a nice little uh, solstice event for you guys if you don't have your own little solstice activity. I'm sure Noelle has her own solstice crap she's going to be doing. Oh, uh, you drink? Okay, you're just going to drink. Okay, cool. Um, solstice, uh, show up for solstice. So, solstice rally in downtown uh, Bank Street. Um, help Missoula imagine a solar energy. And this is put on by Climate Smart Missoula in super short words in inspiration at 510. Um, then there's a photo up at 5:20, just to kind of get the uh, the just the perfect solstice time, and bring lights and or candles for the photo. Dress in bright yellows and enjoy hot cocoa and cookies. Um, and it's happening um, today at 5 to 5:30 p.m. And it's in downtown Higgins and Bank Street, site of their solar phone charger outside Hunter Bay. Um, and it's coming from Missoula, 350 Missoula Arrow. 
uh, Hellgate, S-A-V-E, Missoula Community Foundation, Montana Conservation Votes Education Fund, M-R-E-A, and Sierra Club. And of course, this is for a solar powered um, encouragement here in Missoula as well. So if you support solar power, you can join this. If you want to do with the solstice, you are more than welcome to. And if you're more into the whole spiritual aspect of solstice, we have that just for you guys in this form of the winter solstice. I saw this cute little photo on MissoulaEvents.net and I had to use it. It's OAO Temple House um, Winter Solstice Ritual and Feast Money Evening. Uh, greetings, beautiful souls. The sun is returning. Um, exclamation point. Um, to honor the ancient Yuletide season, the community will be gathering at the OAO, 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 Temple House on Wednesday evening, December 21st. Everyone is welcome to gather at 7.45 p.m. for the Winter Solstice Fire Ritual. Don't forget to dress warmly. They will be passing along the Yule Log and honoring the return of the sun. Games, beverages, and spiritual um, conversations are likely encouraged into the night. As with the public events, feel free to bring friends, family, and uh, alcohol. Um, you must be 21 and up, and it's uh, BYOB kind of thing. Um, and also sustainable snacks, whatever that is. And it will be happening at um, 9463 Upper Miller Creek Road at 7.45 p.m. Winter Solstice. The whole spiritual aspect of the Winter Solstice. You can join all that and more. Here are some of your music events happening tonight. It's Sharon in the Groove celebrating the music of Fish, 4.30 p.m. at the Top Hat Lounge. You can get your uh, ticket punched. You, you fill it out. You get a basically ticket to a, one of the shows at the Top Hat and Wilma. Limiting at Wilma, but more likely you have a better chance of getting it at the Top Hat. Imagine Jam Society is a public jam at an Imagination Brewing Company. So if you're, uh, it's kind of like a jam. You know, if you want to play music and jam with other people, totally do that. Um, country Dance Lesson with Instructor Kathy Clark is happening at 7 p.m. at Sunrise Saloon. Uh, karaoke Contest at the Eagles Lodge. Um, Crap Test at Karaoke at the Badlander. Milk Crate Wednesday at the Palace, which is electronic music. Country uh, Karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon at 9 p.m. So when you're done with Kathy Clark learning how to dance, um, then you can karaoke after that. Maybe if you can dance to karaoke, you can dance to anything pretty much. Um, open mic, Old Beck at VFW Post 209. It's just an open, nice little open mic. Here's some educational events for you guys today. Yoga for Wellness at the Learning Center at Red Willow starting at 10 a.m. today. Um, yeah, Yoga for Wellness. Open house for the makerspace of the Public Library at 10 a.m. Mandarin starters at 11 a.m. at the Children's Museum. So learn a little bit of Mandarin at the Children's Museum starting at 11 a.m. Uh, meditation at the Learning Circle. Um, meditation Learning Circle, and this is... Health and Wellness Open Way Mindfulness Center. Open Way Mindfulness Center. It's starting at noon. Easy Step to Ebooks. Again, I already just said that. NAMI Crafts um, is happening at the Missoula NAMI, and that's at 2 p.m. Um, middle School Writers at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30 this afternoon. Um, you got Yoga for Chronic Pain at the Learning Center at Red Willow at 5 p.m. Uh, tai Chi Quan. It will be at the Learning Center at Red Willow. So after you're done doing yoga, warming up, you can do some Tai Chi. Um, NAMI Family Support Group it has uh, a weekly meeting at 7 p.m. at uh, NAMI Missoula. Um, you can check that out Wednesday. Um, the next, we have some Thursday events. Uh, Make It and Take It Thursdays. Um, Missoula Public Library, the Big Sky Branch hosts Make It and Take It Thursdays. So this will be the last Make It and Take It Thursday. So tomorrow, um, 2.30 p.m., it's after school. You guys get to go down to the Missoula Public, I mean, not the Missoula Public Library, but it's the Big Sky High School library it is just through their front entrance you can't miss it um, you get to make your own holiday cards and holiday um, ornaments and this and that and you get to take it home with you um, if you want more information you can call uh, 728-2400 extension 8605 and you can always google them they're at 3100 south avenue west um, starting at 230 die hard is playing at the roxy theater uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m and here's the synopsis of the movie. Join John McClane as he enjoys the holiday season with family and friends as he's forced to go to his wife's Christmas party. With wacky shenanigans from a few uninvited party crashers, John must find a way to make it through the holidays in one piece, especially in bare feet. Um, that totally doesn't make the movie that doesn't give the movie justice, but it doesn't matter because they're actually putting this on and many other holiday classics leading up to the big day. Spoiler, it's Christmas Day. Um, 
And then finally, Dead Hipster Dance Party will be coming to an end. Uh, it's one of the uh, few things that has been consistently going on for the last 10 years. And it'll be at the Badlander tomorrow night at 9 p.m. It's uh, with the holiday season coming to a peak. Enjoy some sinful fun tomorrow night as the Dead Hips crew celebrate their holiday slash uh, second to last show ever as the series of DJ shows at Badlander comes to a close forever. Of course, they did a little side trip to uh, old Sean Kelly's before it turned into Thomas Marbar. They're at Monks, blah, blah, blah. They jumped around. But pretty much they were primarily at Badlander for most of those 10 years. And next, uh, not this Thursday, not tomorrow, but the Thursday after will be the very, very, very last uh, dead hipster ever. I'm sure they'll have their own little, they'll do a couple DJs things around town, but the official brand of dead hipster will be gone. And if you have some, um, if you want to find out more, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, we have some live jazz happening at Plunk tomorrow night at eight. Um, rocking country karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon. Some more karaoke uh, Thursday night at eight thirty. Uh, there's uh, some live music with PCCS and friends at the uh, old uh, VFW at nine p.m. tomorrow night. Open mic at the Broadway tomorrow night. Um, Rocking Karaoke hosted an R&B Rocks at the Dark Horse, so if you don't like the karaoke at uh, Sunrise Saloon, you can just uh, go to the other side of the building through the bathroom area, and you can go to Dark Horse um, do their own karaoke. Here are some of the uh, Thursday events. Uh, there's the NAMI Weekly Meeting at the Providence Center at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Tiny Tales, 10.30 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Um, Little Bugs, Toddler Hour, Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium. Um, get those little toddlers... Um, Looking at them little cute little bugs. Um, there's magic noodle art at the Children's Museum at 11 a.m. Uh, meditation for veterans at uh, 115 at the Learning Center at Red Willow. Uh, Thursday afternoon, um, that's tomorrow. Uh, NAMI Connection Support Group for in NAMI, Missoula at 1.30 p.m. Um, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, computer Electronics in the Makerspace Missoula Public Library at 3 p.m. Bug Ornaments. You know, you, you look at bugs with toddlers and get toddlers be like, oh, cool, bugs are cool. They're not creepy or whatever. You can also do a bug ornaments at Missouri Butterfly House and Exectarium happening at 3 p.m. tomorrow night. Lego Club also happened at Missouri Public Library. So they're already so close to each other. You can look up, make a bug ornament and then go to Lego Club, Missouri Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. It happens every single Thursday. It's great. Predator feeding. They do uh, Rosie the Chilean Rose Hair Tarantula every uh Thursday, or pretty much, uh, they pretty much do it every day. I, I don't, I'm not even sure if she's um, um, starving ever. So, um, predator feeding at the Missoula Insectarium at 3:30 p.m. Environmental Montana Ugly Sweater Holiday Party. So, if you guys are uh, interested in doing ho ugly sweater parties and all that stuff, starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow at Imagination Brewing Company, they have some ugly sweater stuff going on. And also tonight uh, at the Silver Slipper. There's an ugly sweater contest happening in which I'm already ready to do it because I'll be here at MCAT pretty much all day. And then I'll be from here, I'll go over to that place and do their trivia and probably get like second or third place. I never get, we never get first place because we're just not that good because the music round is our Achilles heel. Uh, but that's a little more of my own stuff I didn't want to talk about. And here is your stop animation movie of the week and it's called Leave Me Alone. This isn't really a good time. Come on, Chuck. Don't shut me out. All right, you can come in, but you can't stay long. Chuck, you've been avoiding us. I didn't ask for you to come bother me. We're your friends. We care about you. Hey, let me in. You answer it. Hey, Ash. I don't think Chuck's in a really good mood right now. Maybe I should go talk to him. <sighs> hey, Chuck. What's going on? Are you okay? I just want to be left alone. Do you mind? We're your friends, Chuck. Don't forget that. Well, there's really nothing I can do for him. It's okay, he's just going through a lot. Just leave me alone. Hey guys, was that Chuck? Hey Chuck, what's going on? This really isn't good time, you all need to leave. Hey man, we need to talk this out. <gasps> hey man, what's your problem? We're your friends and we're trying to help you. I don't need any of you. Chuck, please, don't do this. You can't treat us like this. When you need to be left alone, you need to be left alone. And if I can't make you leave, I'll just go. <laughs> Another exciting installment in uh, Scott Ramp's Stop Motion Anthology as we continue on in through the week. Um, yeah, I'm going to be off next week. Um, I'll see you guys this Friday 
For Wake Up Missoula, as always, I'm Scott Ramp, and hey guys, have a nice couple of days. Today is the winter solstice. It's going to be snowing this weekend, so if you guys are going to be doing some wintry activities this weekend, maybe the weekend for you guys, because it is Christmas as well, so I'll have some more Christmas stuff happening this Saturday. So without further ado, uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you.